Hey, it's good to see you and welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to be discussing allergies, including common causes, symptoms of an allergy, how allergies can affect hearing, and the treatment options that are available. Allergies, commonly experienced by millions of people worldwide, have a wide range of effects on our bodies. While many are aware of the typical symptoms, such as sneezing, itching, and congestion, the impact of allergies on our ears and hearing is often overlooked. According to recent statistics, allergies affect approximately 30% of adults and 40% of children, making them one of the most prevalent health conditions globally. Furthermore, allergies tend to be most prevalent during specific seasons, such as spring and fall, when various allergens are at their peak. So let's get started by taking a closer look at what an allergy actually is. An allergy is an abnormal and exaggerated immune response triggered by exposure to certain substances, known as allergens. When a person with allergies comes into contact with an allergen, their immune system mistakenly identifies it as harmful and launches an immune response to protect the body. During an allergic reaction, your immune system creates antibodies to protect your body from potential harm. These antibodies hang around in different parts of your body, including your ears, waiting for the allergen to show up again. When you come into contact with the allergen again, it attaches to these antibodies, which sets off the release of certain chemicals like histamine. These chemicals cause various symptoms associated with allergies. Histamine, one of the chemicals released during an allergic reaction, can cause several effects in the body. It makes blood vessels widen, which leads to redness and swelling. Histamine can can also give you watery eyes and a runny nose, also known as allergic rhinitis. Sometimes, it can make you sneeze or cough. Histamine's effects extend beyond the skin, nose, and eyes. It can also affect the digestive system, leading to symptoms like stomach cramps, nausea, and diarrhea. Additionally, histamine can affect the respiratory system, causing wheezing or difficulty breathing. So now let's take a look at some of the common causes of allergies. Hay fever is primarily triggered by specific allergens present in the environment. The most common cause of hay fever is exposure to airborne substances, such as pollen from trees, grass, and weeds. These tiny particles are released into the air during specific seasons and can trigger an allergic response when inhaled. Tree pollen is prevalent in the spring, grass pollen in the summer, and weed pollen in the fall, and give rise to the term, seasonal allergies. Apart from pollen, other environmental allergens can contribute to allergy symptoms. Dust mites, which are microscopic organisms that thrive in bedding, upholstery, and carpeting, are a significant trigger. Mold spores, found in damp areas such as basements, bathrooms, and outdoor environments, can also elicit an allergic response. Additionally, pet dander, such as skin flakes, saliva, and urine, from cats, dogs, and other animals, can also act as allergens. So now let's look at the common symptoms experienced by those with allergies. Hay fever primarily affects the nose and eyes. Allergy sufferers can experience symptoms including sneezing, a runny or congested nose, itching in the nose or throat, a sore throat, and watery or itchy eyes. Hay fever can also cause fatigue, irritability, and difficulty concentrating due to disrupted sleep, caused by nasal congestion and frequent sneezing. The severity of symptoms can vary from mild to severe, depending on the individual and the allergen exposure. Now let's take a closer look at how allergies specifically affect the ear and hearing.
allergies can have a significant impact on hearing and contribute to the development of tinnitus, a perception of ringing or buzzing in the ears. The effects of allergies on hearing involve various components of the ear, including the outer, middle, and inner ear, as well as the eustachian tubes. Starting with the outer ear, allergies can cause itching, redness, and swelling of the ear canal. This can lead to inflammation and blockage, known as allergic otitis externa, which can impact sound transmission and result in temporary hearing loss. Moving to the middle ear, allergic reactions can cause inflammation and excess fluid accumulation behind the eardrum, a condition called allergic otitis media. The allergic inflammation and fluid buildup may impair the movement of the eardrum in the tiny bones of the middle ear, known as ossicles. As a result, individuals may experience difficulty hearing, a feeling of pressure or fullness in the ears, and sometimes ear pain. Allergies can also affect the inner ear, which houses the delicate sensory organs responsible for converting sound waves into electrical signals that the brain interprets as sound. While the direct impact of allergies on the inner ear is less common, the inflammatory mediators released during allergic reactions can affect blood flow and disturb the delicate balance of fluid and chemicals within the inner ear. These disruptions can contribute to tinnitus, a common symptom experienced by individuals with allergies. Tinnitus is characterized by a perceived ringing, buzzing, or hissing sound in the absence of an external source. Allergies can worsen tinnitus symptoms or trigger its onset. The exact mechanisms behind the relationship between allergies and tinnitus are still being studied, but it is believed that the inflammatory response and changes in fluid balance within the inner ear may play a role. The eustachian tubes, which connect the middle ear to the back of the throat, play a crucial role in equalizing pressure. Allergies can cause the lining of these tubes to become swollen or blocked, leading to eustachian tube dysfunction. This dysfunction disrupts the normal pressure balance between the middle ear and the outside environment, resulting in symptoms such as muffled hearing, a popping or crackling sensation, and difficulty equalizing pressure during activities like flying or diving. Finally, let's go on to discuss the various treatment options. The treatment of hay fever, including addressing ear symptoms, typically involves a combination of prescribed allergy medications, over-the-counter medications, and home remedies. It is crucial to consult a healthcare professional for an accurate diagnosis and personalized treatment plan based on the underlying cause, especially if symptoms are severe or persistent and are affecting your quality of life. They can provide tailored guidance on medication options, prescribe stronger medications if necessary, and recommend specific interventions for managing ear-related symptoms. Medications prescribed by healthcare professionals may include antihistamines, which block the effects of histamine and help relieve sneezing, itching, and a runny nose. Nasal steroid sprays reduce inflammation and congestion in the nasal passages and can also alleviate ear-related symptoms. Decongestants are another option as they help shrink swollen nasal tissues and improve eustachian tube function. Over-the-counter antihistamines and nasal sprays are also available for self-treatment. These can provide temporary relief for mild hay fever symptoms, including ear-related issues. However, individuals should read and follow the instructions on the packaging and consult a healthcare professional if symptoms persist or worsen. In addition to medications, Several home remedies can help alleviate hay fever symptoms, including those affecting the ears. Nasal irrigation with saline solutions, such as nasal sprays, can help flush out allergens and relieve congestion. Avoiding or minimizing exposure to allergens is another important aspect of managing hay fever, especially during allergy season. This can involve staying indoors during peak pollen times, keeping windows closed, using air purifiers, and wearing sunglasses to protect the eyes from airborne allergens.